Turning now to the rest of the day's news, and the INLA says it has no plans to hand over its weapons, despite announcing that its campaign of violence is over. The group was responsible for some of the most notorious killings of the Troubles. Mark McFadden has more. The INLA murdered more than 100 people during its 35-year history. Civilians, police officers and soldiers were shot dead or targeted in bomb attacks. High-profile victims included Conservative politician Airy Neve and Loyalist paramilitary Billy Wright. But its political ally, the IRSP, says there's no longer community support for a continuation of what it calls the armed struggle. As I mentioned that armed struggle is not a viable alternative now, uh, who's to say if armed violence works in some, in, uh, some circumstances and our circumstances it doesn't, but uh, I think the analysis is now that it, it, it's not working now. The INLA's bloodiest incident was in December 1982. It bombed the drop and well public house in Ballykelly, killing 11 soldiers and six civilians. Those who knew some of the victims are skeptical of the INLA's ceasefire. Who are they? We don't know who they are. Uh, and whether any of the people who disagree with them will go to some of the other organisations, whether it be a split, because there's no peace in Northern Ireland at the moment. There are now calls for the INLA to decommission, but the IRSP doesn't believe it's on the agenda for now. I don't think so. Uh, in our discussions with INLA over this, this last number of years, decommission has not been mentioned. But in saying that, that would be a matter for the INLA. Two monuments, miles apart geographically, even further apart politically. The hope is that the INLA ceasefire means no more memorials will be needed. Mark McFadden, UTV Live, Bally Kelly. The Irish National Liberation Army has been urged to back its words of peace with decommissioning. Yesterday, the terror group said it would pursue its objectives with exclusively peaceful means, but the government says it must go further. With more, here's our Home Affairs correspondent, Vincent Kearney. The INLA was a small but ruthless paramilitary organisation, killing more than 120 people. Dominic McGlinchey was its most notorious leader and one of the most feared terrorists of the Troubles. Known as Mad Dog, he was said to have been responsible for 30 murders. He was shot dead in 1994, one of many INLA members killed as a result of internal feuding. The group's political wing yesterday held a parade in Bray in County Wicklow. And then came the announcement that 35 years after it was founded, the INLA has renounced violence. The Republican Socialist Movement has been informed by the Irish National Liberation Army that following a process of serious debate, consultation and analysis, it has concluded that the armed struggle is over and that the objective of a 32 country socialist republic will be best achieved through exclusively political, peaceful political struggle. There have been concerns that the INLA could join the right of dissident republicans, so its commitment to exclusively peaceful means has been widely welcomed and Sinn Féin has urged dissidents to do likewise. We're not living here in the 1970s, the 1980s, and the 1990s. We're in a new 21st century, and the patriotic thing for everyone to do is, is to embrace politics as a way forward. The government now hopes the INLA will dispose of its weapons. These ones were seized by the Garda in 1995 as they were being transported from Dublin to Northern Ireland. The INLA announcement followed months of secret talks with intermediaries acting on behalf of the British government. The government had hoped the statement would include a commitment to decommission weapons, but it didn't. Secretary of State Sean Woodward has welcomed the rejection of violence, but says those words must now be matched by deeds and that weapons must be put beyond use. Vincent Kearney, BBC Newsline.